Hi everyone, let's take a look at the following physics example. Number one, a 0 0.170 kilogram hockey puck is initially moving at 21.2 meters per second west along the ice. The coefficient of kinetic friction for the puck and the ice is 0 0.005. Part A, what is the speed of the puck after traveling 58.5 meters. So step one, I'm going to use the GRASS approach, G meaning given. So from the first sentence, we know that M is going to be 0 0.170 kilograms. Likewise, if you look at 21.2 meter per second west, this is going to be the velocity and it's going to be the initial velocity. You can write down V1 or VI depending on your teacher or the textbook, um, but I'm going to write down V1 and V2 in this example. And the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is going to be mu k, equals to 0 0.005. Now, it's also giving you the displacement. So delta D in this case is going to be 58.5 meters. Now, here's how you solve this. What you're looking for is what is the speed of the puck after traveling 58.5 meters? So you're looking for V2. And of course, you're really looking for V2 in terms of the magnitude and the direction, which we'll get to. Now, here's the most important part. Begin with the end in mind. So when you think about um, V2, you're thinking about the kinematic formulas. So you're thinking about, for example, V2 squared equals to v1 square plus 2ad. Now notice I didn't use the other four kinematic formulas because those require time and we're not given t. There's no time in this example. So this is the fastest way to figure out, oh, v2 square equals to v1 square plus 2ad is the correct kinematic formula. And your goal is to find the final velocity. So really, we're going to take the square root of this in a moment and we can dismiss the negative case. But wait a minute, we can't really do this yet. If you look at uh, the second part carefully, I'm going to switch colors for you. We do not know what is A. So A is missing right now. So the question becomes, how do we find A before we can find the final velocity? So you go back and you think about Newton's second law. So F net equals to MA. And of course, in this context, we're talking about the force of friction. So the net force equals to the force of friction. By definition, in this case, it's going to be mu k times fn. So again, ff equals to mu k times fn for you know kinetic friction. Uh, if it's static, then it's going to be mu s. But in essence, it's the same formula. Now, if you look at the left-hand side, that's going to be ma, which you can copy. On the right, mu k times fn is the same thing as mu k times fg. Think about fn, the normal force, fg, the force of gravity. They're equal in magnitude, but they're opposite in direction. If you keep going, fg equals to mg, and notice you can cross out m from the left and the right. This tells you that this is independent of m, and you see this quite often in physics, whether you're doing kinematics or forces, um, and there's a lot of reasons behind that, but I'm going to keep going with the calculation here. So a equals to, again from the given, that's going to be 0 0.005, Gravity could be 9.8, 9.81, 9.805. I'm going to stick to 9.8 for now. And of course, you can put in all the units. This is meters per second square. So if you work it out, this is going to be approximately, or I should say equal to 0 0.049 meter per second square. So now we have acceleration, which means we can plug it into the next line. Let me go back to the other color. V2 equals to the square root of, and again, if you go back, this is negative 21.2 meter per second, which we have to square, plus two times negative 0 0.049 meter per second square times 58.5 meters. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit more. You don't have to really write this on, a, on, a, on an assessment of learning, but the reason why these are negative in both cases is because it's heading west. So remember, when you're talking about north and east, that's positive. When you're going west or south, that's negative. 
Again, that's not always true. Like if you're skydiving, right, south could be positive. But in this context, the um, object is going west, so we put the negative there. Now, again, feel free to press pause, grab the calculator, work it out. When you press play again, I'll be here. Okay. Now, I'm going to try this with you right now. So in my calculator, I have negative 21.2 square minus 2 times 0 0.049 times 58.5, take the square root. Now in the display, I see 21.064353378 meters per second. Now remember, um, you can go back to sig figs. Uh, in this case, V2 is gonna be approximately 21.1 meter per second. And of course, you can write down um, that final statement. I'm gonna say it, uh, you can write it down if you like. Therefore, the speed of the puck after traveling 58.5 meters is approximately 21.1 meter per second. If you find this video meaningful and it's adding value to your physics course or your physics life, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. I hope this makes sense.